Hey, what's up guys? It's Tip. Recently, I had the opportunity to sit down with Wow Crendor and talk about Classic Wow, and he had some pretty interesting things to say. So, hope you enjoy. You've actually been one of the oldest Wow-related content creators around. I mean, I remember watching your first video back in what, was it December 2010, the Winter Spring video for Orc vs. Yeah, Wild? it was, it was uh, 2010. I think it was December. You're right, so it was almost in, uh, eight, nine years ago. Oh kind of crazy. God. Insane. It was before Cataclysm, believe it or not. Mm. And you've kind of been here this entire time. You've uh, continued with WoW. You've gone into Hearthstone and a couple of other games. What got you into this whole thing? And what's kind of been able to keep you going throughout basically a decade? Um, so I just got into doing this from just doing it as a hobby. It's like back then you couldn't even make money off of gaming videos. It was like... Uh, you just made a video and you're like, hey guys, check it out. And then maybe I'll make money off this one day, but you know, you're not going to bank on that. It's just, I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed making stories. I enjoyed writing scripts and doing all the voices and everything. And I was like, hey, if people like it. That's cool. It was kind of a way of me to get out of my shell a bit as well, because I was very shy, uh, socially awkward and just kind of like, Ugh. so <laughs> I didn't even know people thought I was funny up until uh, I did that, or people were like, wow, this was funny. I mean, people still don't think I'm funny, but some people yeah. do. <laughs> uh, so it's just it was one of those things where it kind of opened my eyes, and I was like, this is really fun. And so I just kept getting ideas, kept doing videos, and uh, it was I got inspired by a lot of old WoW Machinima stuff, too, like Oxhorn. Yes. Uh, I used to watch a lot of him. Uh, Rurikar was another one. He made things like Jimmy the World of Warcraft story. Uh, or Pepitos or U Realms. He did a lot of that. Now I'm friends with him, so it's kind of cool to be friends with somebody that inspired you. So uh, just a lot of that, and then it kind of snowballed into what it is today. When would you say was the year where things really started to change? Not only for your own channel, but YouTube as a whole. When did this start becoming, wow, this could be a future career? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, probably 20. 11 so probably like the end of 2010 early 2011 because that's when machinima reached out uh great company um <laughs> and they were just like hey uh if you want to make money doing this you can uh sign on with us and i was like okay and you know you're 19 you're like hey this sounds great you signed the contract and then they're like we own you forever and you're like oh Okay. Good deal. <laughs> that Good turns deal. out <laughs> turns out that was illegal, but you know, I got out of that eventually. And uh but that was kind of the first thing where I got my first check and it was like, here you go, some money for doing what you do and I'm like, Whoa, like this is kinda of surreal, like they're just paying me money to do this now. It's just it was kind of mind blowing in that aspect. So I've just been very lucky that I got to do that because I don't know what I'd be doing <laughs> if I had to like go back and not have any of that happen. Absolutely. Do you think given the landscape today and based on that experience, do you think this is something that can continue? Is this something you want to be doing the rest of your life? I mean, you're obviously very good at it. Um, I wouldn't say very good. Ah. I, cons <laughs> I consider myself like the aging veteran bench player in the NBA. It's like if you watch if you watch the NBA, it's like I know a lot of the big people. I know a lot of uh, even like really talented people and cool people, but I'm like the 10-year the veteran at this point. I'll come in. I'll hit a three-pointer. I'll like make a few good passes and like cheer on the team, and I'm like, hey, good job, guys. So, I mean, I'm fine with that too. I never wanted to be like the, the mega YouTube person. I kind of just like cruising in the middle. Mm -hmm. I just kind of know people go on their shows promote my shirts and uh <laughs> I'll just go back to doing what i do so i don't mind that i think it's i think it's fitting for me well you heard it uh check out his shirts on the crendor merch <laughs> shop yeah uh yeah <laughs> mainly sweatpants at this point i actually wear my own sweatpants like every other day most comfortable things honestly you just put them on and multi-use outside inside at the gym wherever you know <laughs> <laughs> yep and it's great because uh people see them and they're just like oh it's a sloth on them and i'm like like they don't even get what it actually is even though it, it technically is a sloth but they don't need to understand my branding or anything like that yeah yeah 
Well, that's awesome, man. And honestly, uh, best of luck to you in the future. And, and you've been able to do so much in, in this past decade. I remember it was you, Jesse Cox and Total Biscuit. That was kind of like the trio back in the day. That's what kind of honestly inspired me to get into this. Um, you guys had this like trifecta synergy. I don't know what to call it, but just you guys brought a lot <laughs> of really cool things to the table. And um, it looks like even though that happened such a long time ago, it looks like things are kind of coming full circle now, especially after BlizzCon. And uh, we heard that Classic was announced. And I know that you played Classic WoW quite a bit back in the day, or Vanilla WoW quite a bit. Actually, you raided and you even got Benediction on your Priest. Mm-hmm. That I did. I uh, I started playing WoW. Well, Classic WoW is just WoW <laughs> in general. Uh, in January 2nd of 2005. So it was about a month and a half after the game released. I didn't play the beta. I never played Warcraft RTS games or anything. It was just... Oh, this looks cool. We're gonna we're gonna play it, and so I uh, played a hunter, which ended up being my Billy character, and I got him to sixty as my orc. And then everybody was a hunter at that point, and I was like, well, I don't want to play what everybody else is playing because they can't find a group. Like all the groups are full. Like I'm a hunter. Like oh, we don't need those. So I was like, what's everybody need? It's like they need a priest, because nobody wants to heal and nobody wants to be a priest. So I was like, I'll just make one of those and level it up. And I think. Uh, I was in the random name generator and it gave me a name like Crendorn. And so I just changed like the K to a C and got rid of the N. And I was like, yeah, it works. I didn't know I'd, <laughs> that would kind of be ingrained in my entire life after that. <laughs> Inspiring origin story. <laughs> <laughs> random name generator. Great. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, it's, it's, don't even ask me how I came up with my name. Okay. But yeah, it, it happens, you know, and, um, <laughs> And that's awesome. Honestly, uh, the majority of people that I've had the opportunity to speak with, they either played late in vanilla, they never really got to see the rating content. So it's really interesting to talk to somebody that was actually there for at least, you know, the first couple of tiers. And in that context, as a player, when you heard the announcement, what was your reaction? I was pretty excited because I've kind of wanted to go back and try it, uh, just kind of to relive the the nostalgic uh, kind of relive the nostalgia but to clarify and kind of bring to light all of my memories to be like was that actually fun or am i remembering it you know in the in like the rose tinted glasses uh, so i want to go back and kind of re-experience all that and then i kind of want to also see everybody else's reaction because there's so many people who never played it and they're going to be playing it for the first time and they're you know it's like you're grandpa being like i remember it was like this and they're gonna be like well now i can actually see what it was like but the the thing i am realizing is even with all of this it's not going to be exactly how it was back then because the internet has changed huh. and because back then you know you didn't have data mining you didn't have all these websites telling you like here's what's in the thing it's just like thoughtbot and alakazam and you'd just be like, all right. And you just, uh, there wasn't as much information available and people didn't know as much about the game. And it was just kind of a big Wild West world where you just went in there and did your thing and made your own fun at some times. But I think that's what made it so fun to a lot of people. Yeah. Do you think this surplus of information, this modern technology age, do you think that's going to help the game or hurt the game when it comes out? Um. I mean, it can do both. It's the same way with modern WoW, kind of implementing all these different things like group finder and all that. Like in one way, it helps the game because you don't have to wait as long for groups and you get in that. But then one way it hurts the game because it's, you know, you're losing out on the social MMORPG aspect of going out and talking to people and making a group. So it's kind of a give or take situation. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully more give than take i guess <laughs> that's what we're all hoping for <laughs> yeah um when classic does release by the way any uh any speculation on the release date um knowing blizzard it'll be like two years mm -hmm. i guarantee it's got like i don't think it'll be next year i think at blizzcon next year they'll probably announce the date and it'll probably be like a year from then that's what that's what i would guess but 
I'm hopefully wrong and it's sooner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had I had someone tell me it could happen before Battle for Azeroth, but I don't know. That's not looking likely to oh, be wow. right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't think it'd be before that. So a couple of years out still, but it's it's always good to plan ahead. And mm -hmm. uh speaking of planning, when it does drop, um are we going to be seeing more machinimas are we, or machinima style videos are we going to be seeing more boar <laughs> thrills are we going to be seeing any more of that old school content from you i think so i think it'll inspire me to kind of go back there's a lot of times where i want to make videos from that timeline and then i just never do and then people are like oh you go to a private server and all that but it's i don't know i've always just kind of used actual in-game footage a lot of the time and so i like having an easy way to be like ah all right i'm on this thing but or the server get on really easy. But I don't know. I've just, I've never, uh, I've never really played a whole bunch on WoW private servers. So I might hop on and give it a try. Cause I know a lot of people have I'm like, oh, it's really fun. Check it out. And I've just, I don't know what stopped me. I've just always <laughs> been like, oh, I don't know. But uh, even playing things like Burning Crusade, like I know some people that play Burning Crusade private servers. They have a lot of fun. It's their Wrath of the Lich King and all that. So, um, I mean, I strayed off from the question, but uh, yeah, I'll, prob I'll probably do that. <laughs> well, you brought up another very interesting question as well, and it's one that the community has been debating for months now since the announcement. Um, we all know how great Vanilla WoW was, or we actually, you know, we hold it in, in very fond memory. At the end of the day, it, it does end. And um, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, one of the questions that the community has been asking itself these past couple of months what happens afterwards? You mentioned Burning Crusade just now. You mentioned Wrath of the Lich King, I think. Where do you see this project going after Classic comes to an end? Um, I think they would continue on with all the other old expansions. Like I think they would do Burning Crusade uh, for like a few years. I mean, they got enough content to kind of continuously do it for a while, but I feel like once you hit things like Cataclysm, people would not care as much, like, oh, whatever. Um, but I think uh, I think that's kind of what's confusing about it too is they're making this, but then people are like, "Well, what if they made old WoW expansions?" And it's like, I don't I don't think they're gonna do that. It's uh, there's just there's a lot of questions about it that I think people want to know, and it's just a very vague uh, concept right now. But I think they're just gonna do vanilla WoW. They'll probably do Burning Crusade, and then maybe Wrath of the Lich King. And I think that's all people would really want anyway. Personally, I agree, honestly. And uh, you brought up a very good point, and that is the questions or the ambiguity surrounding the topic. And one of the biggest questions on a lot of people's minds is the concept of changes. Do mm. you Have you heard of this debate? Have you been following this a little bit? I have. If, uh, <laughs> if, I, if I was Mike Morheim and I came up to you and I said, all right, Crendor, here are the keys to Blizzard Entertainment. I'm gonna be retiring on my yacht. Go for it, <laughs> do whatever you want. How would Vanilla WoW, how would Classic WoW look like in Crendor's image? Um, well, I would probably keep, I, would, I feel like I'd want to slowly move through the Vanilla WoW patches. Um, I'd probably start at like the base game and then maybe like after a month you do like another patch and then another patch and kind of slowly move it along. And then once you hit the, the end cycle, you could even keep it there. Uh, and then open up another server and do the exact same thing for people that wanted to kind of go through all the patches another time. And then you just <laughs> you can do it as many times as you want. But uh, I think that's part of uh, what everybody's so concerned about now is where are they going to start it? Because the game drastically changes over a very small amount of time to the point where I was looking over all the old classic wow patches. I made a video on it even where I was like, I'm reading through all the old wow patches. And there's things like flight paths. Or you, you don't even realize how important flight paths are. It's like, you don't have to click each one individually anymore. And I was like, wow, I forgot that was even a thing. Yeah. It's, it's just little quality of life changes, but uh, it's kind of cool to go relive them. But it's, again, one of those things I mentioned earlier, like how cool would it be reliving that, um, clicking on individual flight paths, uh, and then like, how would it make you feel after a week of doing it? Like, oh, this is fun. I remember doing this. And then you're like, all right, I'm kind of tired of it. So I think it'd be good to slowly and progressively move through all the patches. Absolutely. And would you like to see any core changes to the game? Um, 
I mean, a lot of some people have been saying things like, for example, wow, might be a little bit too easy today because of the information that's available. Um, would you like to see adjustments made to make the game a little bit more difficult, more similar to what it was back then? Or is that something that you think is just, it's not a very big deal? Um, like changes to classic wow to make it yeah like that. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't want to change how classic wow was like, I would yes. like, <laughs> That's that's kind of the whole point about it is you're bringing it back to that state like the there shouldn't be like a dungeon finder in it because then you're you're just destroying the entire concept of what you're doing. It's like you're bringing it back so people can experience how it was. So. <laughs> no, I'm I'm with you, brother, all the way. <laughs> mm. And um, I think the majority of the community is with you. Uh, I've been looking for somebody who's kind of pro changes just to make things a little bit more interesting. <laughs> yeah. But but I think everybody who's played it is on the same page, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, and assuming that does happen, assuming we get a relatively no changes, progress through patch, progress through expansion type of, of scenario, how how big do you think it's going to be? I mean, what's what's the success meter looking like uh, in your mind right now? Is this going to be as big as it was back in the day? Is it going to be smaller or is it going to be even bigger? Um, well, I think initially it's going to be gigantic. Cause there's going to be so many people. Like, you've got three types of people. There's going to be people who did play it. They want to go back and play it again. There's going to be the people who have been playing private servers and stuff like that that just really want to play classic wow and it's like sweet now i can play it on a official server and you know don't gotta do private servers and whatever and then there's gonna be all the people that never played classic wow they're like i want to go try classic wow and see what it was all about so you've got all three of these types of people going in and playing it and so it's just going to be flooded for probably about a few weeks to a month and then i think it'll just slowly drop off um to a point where it's more manageable but i don't think it's going to be um like a small amount of player it'll probably be uh, i can't really think of like an exact number but uh, i think it'll be sizable enough that they'll want to keep doing stuff with it like releasing burning crusade or wrath of the lich king and then uh, it's one of those things where having those people playing could also branch out into their other uh games to the point where they're like oh hey you play vanilla wow why not check out the new wow expansion and then they'll like probably throw in something like uh log in to wow today and get like a free month of classic wow or something like that because you know they're gonna tie it all together somehow yeah because that's how they make money <laughs> exactly no absolutely and um and let, let's assume for a second that happens let's assume it pops off and mm -hmm. uh, a couple of months down the line a year down the line it goes down but it's still a pretty sizable player base as somebody that's you know been with Blizzard or worked with Blizzard closely for a long time with Hearthstone and stuff like that, do you see Blizzard looking at classic success and asking themselves, okay, maybe we might have made a wrong turn in our timeline here. Should we adopt some of these older principles? Can you see Blizzard kind of molding the modern game closer to what Classic WoW was if it's a success? Um, that's kind of a... Well, a little bit, yes, a little bit, no. I feel like they tried it in Cataclysm mm -hmm. uh, a little bit, and it didn't go over all that well. And I think part of it's just the people who play WoW uh, and have gotten into WoW in the last couple of years or people who have gotten into WoW since things like Pandaria aren't as used to uh, all that. And I feel like people have grown um, very comfortable with things like LFG and LFR and the convenience of it all. And I don't think those are bad things, uh, per se, but I think um, that it was more of an old schooly RPG back then. And so things like finding your party and buying ammo for your, uh, your hunter weapon and all this type of stuff is, uh, I think it's cool, but I don't think they're going to put it back into the game because people have just grown so uh, used to what the game has become that it's practically a brand new game. And I don't think a company like Activision uh, would let them do that either because they care about profits and they're like, whoa, drastic changes. Let's not do that. Yeah. So it's just, I think there's just a lot of things against uh, them changing the game to that point. But I think that's why they want to bring back classic wows. Cause they're like, Hey, if you like that and you like the game the way it was, then here you go. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So I think that's why they're doing it. I got you. 
Well, if Blizzard changing the modern game is off the table, what about other companies? Do you think other companies, if they saw the success of Classic WoW, could be looking at, you know, looking back and saying to themselves, well, we might have messed up on our attempts at the MMO genre, but maybe there's still something here. Maybe there's an audience, a willing audience um, that's willing to come to these types of games. Do you think others in the industry, like the EAs and the Biowares and the people that ring your doorbell, um, <laughs> do you think uh, those people would take another crack at the uh, MMORPG genre? Could we see a new MMO kind of design in the spirit of Classic WoW? Um, I mean, it's very possible just because there's been a lot of games that have tried to revitalize old genres uh, and they've worked all right. But the problem is with MMOs is they kind of require the most amount of money to get everything going. You got to build this vast worth and then you've got to have all these servers and like have, support this giant player base. And you're like, are we doing subscriptions? Well, if you don't do subscriptions, you got to make money somehow, like some other way. And it's just, it's so hard to compete in the MMORPG genre. And I think uh, if you watched all the MMOs come out throughout the last 10 years, you kind of saw that unfold with things like Warhammer and uh, Lord of the Rings Online were like, they're still going, but they're definitely not what they had planned them to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of the WoW killers are like Rift. I remember Rift was one. It's just, there's a lot. There's a big list. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like one of the only one, a few of the only ones that have really worked out are like Guild Wars. I feel like a lot of people still play Guild Wars. And part of it's because they're like, hey, no subscriptions. And it's one of the first games to really do that. And then EVE Online, just because I feel like a lot of people are just really dedicated to EVE, and it's a different type of MMORPG. Um, and, like, aside from that, I'm sure there's a few other ones, like you could say Elder Scrolls is still going and uh, all that, but WoW is such a staple. Of, it kind of revolutionized what an MMORPG is after EverQuest, and then I feel like nothing ever topped that. It's like the Google yeah. of <laughs> MMORPGs. Well, um, so I don't know if they'd bring back uh, MMORPGs or anything, because I think it's just too big of a genre to really compete in. Is there a feature in your mind right now that you're thinking of that's like, it needs this, you know, we need to see this in MMOs. Have you put a lot of thought into stuff like that? I have put a lot of thought into it, and I have no idea what they need. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I was like, I don't know how they would do it. If, I hope somebody does it, but and I hope it's one of those things like, wow, that's such a great idea. I don't know how I could have thought of that, but I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a lot harder than, than most people think. It's like, well, if they did this, it sounds cool, but maybe it doesn't turn out well. And it's just, it's mm -hmm. hard to find that universal fix. Yeah. But uh, but I guess let's be thankful for what we have and, and uh, get back to classic real quick. So mm -hmm. you, you went through Molten Core. Did you go through BWL when it was live? Mm -hmm. I did. Every vanilla raid when it was live, except for Nax at the end of it. I never got into Nax, but um, even I remember being in Orgrimmar and I was just walking around and I saw some shaman wearing the tier one armor and I was like, that's so cool. And it made me want to get that armor, but I didn't even realize it was shaman only at the time. I was just like, that armor is so cool. And yeah. so when I started doing Molten Core, it was like, you're going on this adventure for the first time it's like oh my god a raid and like you know I, like when everything's for the first time it kind of blows your mind like oh my god it's like 40 people together and we're all like on the same voice channel and we're all talking and working together and it was it was a really cool unique thing to go through in general because i mean not many other games were like hey it's 2004 on the internet like people are still getting used to even having cable internet and st like faster internet. it's like now you're with 40 people in a game online talking and working together like it was just crazy yeah it's insane and um it's insane that you know you've you went so far into the game for somebody like you that's seen you know 70 80 percent if not more of, of vanilla wow what are your goals as a player what are the things you're looking you're looking forward to going back and seeing you know, do you want to get into Nax? You want to clear Nax, maybe rank 14 PVP. What are the things in your mind where you're like, okay, this time around, I have to do this? Well, my uh, my goals are not the same as a lot of other people who are like, yeah, we got to go raid hard and get all this. It's like, I already did a lot of the raids. I already remember the raids. I have good memories from raiding and 
my guilds I was in and all that. So I was like, I don't really feel the need to raid again. Um, that's just my perspective, like my own feelings. And I know a lot of other people that want to raid and that's cool. But my main thing is going back and just leveling from one to 60 again. And even doing all the five mans again, uh, like leveling up and seeing how much harder they were and how much more you have to pay attention uh, compared to like five mans now where you just burn through it and get your thing and leave. Um, and then just uh, a lot of just open world interaction, things like crossroads PvP and uh, fighting at Taran Mill and <laughs> everything down there. And that's why uh, I'm going to make her rogue because I remember rogues were... One of the douchiest things. And I never got to play one. I just always got killed by him. And I was like, now I can do that. I can, I can truly experience vanilla WoW PvP because of the rogue. It's got to be an undead rogue too, right? You got to be undead. Yeah. You got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's awesome, man. Um, it's interesting to see that perspective. Uh, the only people that seem to have that perspective are the people that actually experienced it. And just in my experience which is mm. interesting. Some of us, like I played vanilla back in the day for two years, but I only hit level 51 before BC launched. Mm. And um, <laughs> it's, uh, I've got all these ambitions, but you have, you have to remember, I guess at the end of the day, it's, you know, rating is, you do it and then you've kind of done it, I guess, huh? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's an entirely different game when you start rating. It's like you get one to 60 and then it's like, all right, now we play the real game. You know, it's, yeah. it's one of those types of things. But yeah, it was like I would raid three nights a week. I mean, I was in high school. I had nothing else to do. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I'd raid, raid three, like, three, three nights a week. And it'd be Monday was Onyxia Day. And then we would do Molten Core, Molten Core, Molten Core. So this was four technically. It was three Molten Core days. And then... After we did that, it would be like Onyxia, Molten Core, and then Blackwing Lair, Blackwing Lair. And so you just kind of would progress in. And then Blackwing Lair was cool because with Molten Core, you started with trash mobs and you worked the trash mobs. And then Molten or, uh, Blackwing Lair was like, hey, here's a boss right away. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. Like, I didn't expect that. Like, it kind of just blew your mind right off the bat. Like, this is so different. There's no trash mobs right away. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was just. Uh, I have no need or no want, I guess, to go back and do that because I've already done it all. But then there's so many things with leveling up that I have questions about where I'm like, how was like getting poisons again? Or like, I remember buying arrows, but like, was it that, you know, annoying to buy arrows or was it fun? Or like, you know, the, the five man dungeons to get attuned for everything. I'll, like, I'll probably still do the attunements, even though I don't want to raid just because I want to remember doing the attunements and being like, oh, yeah, I remember this. So for me, it's more of a reliving uh, what I did um, up to rating because I don't really remember that much of it. There's like little glimpses of memories, but nothing where I'm like, ah, yes, I remember that. Because I mean, it was 15 years ago almost. So yeah. it's like thinking back, I'm like, oh, my God. So that's my my main drive behind playing. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And um, hopefully you're able to relive it just as it was, if not better. Um, what uh, The general sentiment, I guess, are you going to be playing with Jesse or TB? Is there like a positive sentiment from like the community around you? Everyone wants to try this again. Or for some people, it's kind of like, well, we already experienced it. We've moved on. You know, is this something that a lot of people are looking forward to or maybe not so much? Um, well, it's been interesting because I asked that for a lot of people on my fishing with Crendor thing where I fish with people and I just ask them about WoW and how they played WoW. And a lot of, it's like split 50, 50. There's either people like, Oh, I can't wait to go back. Can't wait to play it. And there's people like, Oh my God, I don't want to go back. Like that's, <laughs> I, that's, I already did that as hard as, you know, grindy or whatever. I don't want to do that again. So, uh, I think it just depends on their memories as well. Cause I mean, it was so long ago that a lot of people look back on that and, uh, they could even be having bad, uh, times in their life at that point where you just think back to vanilla wow and you're like oh yeah i was you know going through debt then or like i had family issues happening and so you have bad memories tied into it well some people are like oh i was you know i was getting married i got a great job as that, and then i was raiding and it was great i want to so i think a lot of it's just tied into what you're going through at that time and i think that plays into wanting to go back and play it but uh, it's been it's been pretty 50 50 from what I've been asking of people well it sounds like it's something you're looking forward to 
and mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to it. And I think a lot of the audience is looking forward to it. I don't know. I still can't believe it. I'm still shell shocked, you know, like <laughs> the J. Allen Brack when he did the, you know, is vanilla mic drop and like it just went crazy. Like, I still can't believe it happened. I know. Oh, it's uh, it's like I, I kind of knew it was coming, but I still didn't think they were going to like make it into such a cool announcement the way they did it. It's like, I was like, ah, oh, maybe they'll do it, but I don't know. And I was like, oh shit, they actually did. <laughs> so was, I think everybody was really excited about that. Even the people that um, don't want to play Vanilla WoW that much, I think they're kind of excited for the people that want to play it and just being like, yeah, hey, that's cool. You know, you can go back and see what it was like. Yeah, it definitely like that whole like movement behind it. It definitely, I guess, like brings us beyond that, I guess, and kind of, closes that chapter in, in WoW history, which is really cool. Mm. But uh, thank you so much, Crendor. I don't want to take any more of your time. Um, <laughs> it's It's been awesome, man. I really, really appreciate you coming on. And uh, I guess before we go, are there any shout outs, um, any projects you have up and coming you'd like people to know about? Um, I'm actually working on Legion in a minute. I've done every every expansion, including Vanilla WoW in a minute. And so... Uh, I finally wrote my script for Legion in a minute and uh, I've been doing like a video every day. So I've been like working on it a bit every day and trying not, not burn myself out by just going like hard on the entire project in one day. So I'm hoping to release that by the end of the week. Uh, so I'm pretty excited for that. And then uh, I just, uh, I've been making videos every day. I've been streaming more. I like streaming. I'm actually going to stream my vanilla WoW stuff probably when it comes out. I think that's going to be my most fun way to play is just live stream it and be like, guys, I remember this or guys, I know what this is and like kind of almost teach everybody about it. So I think that's going to be uh, that's fun. So let's just look up Crendor and you'll find me. <laughs> exactly. You can, um, you can find all of Crendor's social media links below his uh, picture right now. And uh, in particular, three series that I really enjoy his Boar Thrill series from back in the day. <laughs> he, he mentioned his fish, uh, Fishing with Crendor series and his WoW leveling series, all great series and just great content, almost 10 years worth of content. So if you've been hungering for more WoW content and you're the one or two people that hasn't heard of Crendor before, you can go and check out his YouTube channel and uh, his Twitch page and all the associated links. So thank you so much, Crendor. Uh, I appreciate it. And thank you so much, uh, guys, for watching. Take care. Yeah. See you. <laughs> if you want to see more of Crendor, you can check him out on any of his social media links in the description below. I love his Orc vs. Wild series, and it's definitely one that I recommend. But aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this interview, and let me know in the comments who you want to see next. I'll try to get him on as well. But uh, have a wonderful day, fellas, and as always, tips out, baby.